Jason, appreciate your hard work on that. Yes, sir. One more case this evening. It's REZ 2018-07, William Brown. Yes, sir. And I know, um, I think Bishop Wise, there's been a lot of movement on these cases. That's just the way it happens. Um, with this one for 07, you have seen this one before. This is the, the third time the Planning Commission will have seen this particular case. The request is to go from R1, one acre lot, residential to R10, which is minimum 10,000 square foot lot residential. Uh, history wise, the first case that the Planning Commission and County Commission saw was from R1 to R10. Uh, both of the Planning Commission and County Commission recommended denial of that case at that time. The second drive, which was last year in early 2017 when the County Commission looked at it, was a request to R21, which the Planning Commission recommended for. Um, the County Commission did not. And so what the applicant has done is come back with some considerations in this R10 request, and staff has countered that with some conditions, which I'll go over in just a moment, to try to address um, trying to allow the developer to develop residentially, but also accommodate for some of the concerns of the neighborhood. And so with that, you have the updated um, cover sheet. Really, it was just about getting those conditions finalized with engineering um, and planning. What you also have is a conceptual plan. The current conceptual plan, which shows proposed R10 style of development, the existing resident, which is currently owned and occupied by the developer, would remain. Um, he is proposing a 10-foot buffer with a privacy fence uh, and landscaping along the western and the southern portions. One question that I do think I would like the developer's representative to address is whether or not that fence is a solid fence or um, a clear chain link. I believe it is a solid fence, but they don't denote really that, but that's just based on their previous comments so far. What you also have is a copy of the previous site plan um, from last year, which showed half acre lots. You can see the difference in the number. Um, dominantly, they just have one entrance, but a little bit of a larger lot uh, on the property. And then finally, we have um, the proposed conditions that were finalized with engineering and, and planning. Um, the first condition uh, did change because the county engineer with that additional entrance onto Copeland is going to want um, it's going to want that driveway to front an interior road. Uh, the second condition is about paving Lester Road if you touch it. The third condition, which is about constructing a sidewalk from the development to Lounge Middle School. And the fourth condition, um, and this is really the newest one we didn't discuss at the work session, is that the western and southern border of the subject property, all of the lots that front there on that edge and the southern edge and western edge will have a minimum lot width of 100 feet. The motivation there is R1 zoning and R21 zoning makes the, each lot a minimum width of 100 feet. And so our intent was to try to make sure that at least along those edges you get a lot that is consistent with a lot width that could go there now or could go there with R21. In R10 you could go down to 80 feet. And so our motivation was to try to make a condition and try to help it blend in with those adjacent edges. So those conditions and the developer um, and the representative uh, will, I think, speak to those, but ultimately, um, if that will help their rezoning request, they are in favor of those conditions. They, they look at those and they understand trying to help the neighborhood, trying to help their development to make it fit. And so they were in favor of those conditions, and I spoke to them uh, this morning about all four of those. The other main update that you had in the movement of this case is within the packet that I um, gave you. And, that is three pages worth of signatures and a petition for people who are concerned uh, with this particular development. You can see the opposition petition does dominantly include people from Leicester and Copeland Road. Remember, Copeland Road goes down, you know, 1,000 feet plus to the west and to the east. It's a longer road. Leicester Road does extend to the south and to the north. Um, to the south, it cuts out to inner perimeter. So there's a, quite a distance there. We do not have a map for you this evening. We received it just this morning, but I did want to at least tell you this probably adds anywhere from 9 to 16 signatures based on the, the petition that you were able to view uh, last year. So there has been some additional work by those who are concerned. You can see their concerns are increased traffic, uh, safety, decreased property values, and general well-being of our community is what the petition indicates. 
I can tell you, and I believe the applicant will address this, traffic-wise, um, they've given some thought to whether or not this development will have a negative impact on traffic, or they say a significant negative impact on traffic. Uh, their engineer indicates it will not. I follow that up with a county engineer who agrees with their engineer just to test that. To me, there is a traffic problem for around a half hour in the morning and a half hour in the afternoon associated with how they process traffic through Lounge Middle School. Um, to me, there is a way to address that traffic, but it involves widening this road. I just don't know how you're going to combat that excess traffic from Lounge Middle School during those times without widening the road, even maybe allowing for a, a drop right turn lane next to the Lounge Middle School. So what this developer could do to help those two half hours is very limited, um, but that is where I've observed and know there to be some issue to be is when school is in in the morning and the evenings when people are driving their children to school or picking them up from school, traffic does back up on Copeland. I think you will hear more about that from the applicant's engineer and probably also from the opposition um, as far as property values. Um, I believe the type of home that Mr. Branham will construct, in my opinion, based on the lot cost and the development cost, will probably be minimum $150,000 based on my uh, experience with markets in the area. Uh, and y'all know this, you can only afford to put a house that is so small on a piece of property that costs you so much to build before you literally are breaking even or losing money on your investment. Um, developers are in the business of trying to make money and not lose it before they develop. And so part of that will be probably proven before they get financing. But ultimately, I think um, a minimum $150,000 house will be, in my opinion, an improvement of property values in the area. Um, but that is something that y'all will have to determine and recommend on tonight. I'll try to give any background to you that I can. This case, out of the three, certainly had the most movement. When we got that petition this morning, it took an email that we thought we might give you early this morning and wait until this afternoon until we felt like we had things prepared and packaged for you. I don't have any other updates. I do expect those to speak uh, in favor and against tonight. Um, the applicant's agent, at least in favor, and those in concern, opposition, and against. Jason, I got just one or two questions for up to the other commissioners. With the, with the increased lot size, do you know uh, what are, how many lots we have now? Um, the current proposal is, I believe, for 39. Right, but you want you want to do printers at 100, so you, you, you know what a new count is going to be? I, I don't. But I, I anticipate that will probably cost them maybe two lots. They do have some movement on the southern border. The western border is the one where it's a little bit tighter. Um, the applicant's engineer, when we spoke earlier, did not think that would be much of an issue. But to me, my calculations cost them at least, if it can go 39, maybe down to 37. Uh, and my follow-up, my next question uh, before we open it up is, uh, the, the plat that you got in our packet shows a 2016, I believe. Yes, sir. Uh, and is that the last time we saw that? It, we got it late 2016, um, the Planning Commission. I don't believe they tabled it. I think you went ahead and recommended approval. The county commission tabled it, which rolled it over to early 27. And that's where my question comes from. Do you know why the county commissioners denied I do. Um, at their first hearing with all the opposition, the county commissioners listed out several items that they wanted to hear from the applicant on. Um, it was regarding design, some of the things that they had commented on as far as the type of development and some of the development plans that they had. Um, and some potential accommodations to um, the type of house, the size of the house, the value of the house. And they gave the developer a few weeks or a month to come back with some information on that. When the developer came back, um, he did have an attorney represent him. In my opinion, and they're here to speak on this more if they would like, but in my opinion, the county commissioners were not satisfied with their responses chose to deny it at that time. So the extra time they took, I think, was for additional information. My sense was the county commissioners were not satisfied with the amount and the type and chose to deny it. Okay. Commissioner Wilson, you want to Yeah. Um, my concern was, is it, I, I know that you said they did traffic studies, but the time where you're having a problem is in the morning when school's taken in and probably in the evening time when school's let down. So if you look at that road from a traffic volume for the whole day, yeah, it probably might probably work. Mm -hmm. But you dump those extra vehicles out there on that road is my concern. Mm -hmm. And I, 
I'm just wondering if that has been uh, addressed as far as how it's going to impact uh, Copeland Road at those particular times, because that's when they're going to be coming in and out. Sure. I mean, to me, the and I think the applicant's engineer, they will follow up. But okay. The response thus far has been, during those times, you have potentially traffic back up in front of this property to wait on getting in and out of Lounge Middle. You still have the southbound lane free and clear. Traffic only backs up on the northbound lane. So you at least have the ability, if you live here, to take a right and go up and take a left on Lester or go all the way out to the inner perimeter or take a right on Lester. So from a right turn standpoint, it will probably funnel traffic down Lester or out to inner perimeter on Copeland during those times. Um, I'll let the applicant's engineer okay. follow up to that, but generally that's the response I would initially share and I think we'll give a greater detail on that. Okay, then. I got another. Can I, can I go with another question? Sure, go ahead. What's the reasoning if, if the whole subdivision, the rest of the subdivision is okay for 10,000 square foot lots, why are we putting one acre lots at the back? Are we trying to... I, I talked to the, and I hear what you're saying, I talked to the developer about a mixture of lots in there, maybe a half acre and one acre, but ultimately I'm not, I didn't recommend that. What I recommended was only the width of the lots. So they can still be 10,000 square feet, they just have to be a little bit wider. And that was an attempt to try to address some of the privacy concerns and some of the density concerns. So they can still be less than an acre. They just have to be the same width as a one acre or a half acre lot. So instead of 80, they have to be 100. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to, based on the concerns from the neighbors and what the applicant said they would do, just was trying to go a little bit further without what I felt like was a split zone property, which so far tonight I've been over two on. So I tried to go a little bit different on this particular one to see if, there, if it couldn't fit in a way that made sense for the neighborhood without having to split zone a one acre piece and a half acre piece, which is honestly an alternative that we talked about early on was a split zone in on this property. Yeah. This, I know this property, it has water and sewer available now, right? Yes, sir. Um, water and sewer comes up Lester Road and then west on Copeland to serve. The primary motivation was the middle school. Um, but it does allow for this entire area um, to be served by water. So Do you know if they're going to tie into the county system or not? The middle school already has. Um, no. This developer, for what they want, um, I believe they want to, and honestly, our regulations would require them to. Okay. Thank you, sure. Yeah. Anyone here this evening wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Kent. I'm with Innovative Engineering, 2214 on Patterson Street. I'm here on behalf of the owner, Mr. Brown, requesting the R10 development. Um, on the conceptual site plan, I don't think it's stressed enough that the on the western, the southern property line, Mr. Brandon is going beyond what would normally be required for an R10 development by the addition of the uh, six inch, six, six foot high fence that yes, will be solid. That will be a solid fence. And the, the buffering with the uh, trees and uh, shrubs, that will be a requirement of that development. Okay. The other thing on that side plan that he is doing is planning for the future widening, <coughs> not widening, but the paving of Lester Road by, he's, he's gonna go ahead and deed 10 feet to Lance County. So that in the future, when the inevitable happens and Lester Road is paved, the county doesn't have to deal with multiple property owners. They will already have the right way in place. Uh, Mr. Brown is okay with the, the uh, conditions uh, requested from staff. In fact, those are, those are very good recommendations that we didn't address in this concept plan. They were considered. Uh, we just didn't address it, and, and now it's, it's, it's on paper. It's like compliant. Um, I'll start with the traffic study. Um, just a, a little background so you know where I come from. Um, I received my master's degree with a concentration in transportation. My first job after college uh, was here with the city of Alabama as a traffic engineer. So I, I do have a traffic background. Yes, last year we did a traffic study. Uh, in relation to the proposed R21 development, 
and I can address the changes that happen or that will happen with, with the uh, additional lots. Not to get into the weeds about the traffic study, but we do study, we do count the existing cars out there and we count them in 15 minute increments. And I personally sit out there and counted all those cars. And by doing it in 15 minute increments, we can get to what's called the peak hour, which is what your concern is. And knowing that the primary uh, driving force of the, the traffic impact out there being the middle school, we concentrate on our counts during the morning and during the afternoon. A typical two-lane uh, paved road, if you will, um, the, the average capacity, full capacity of a, a two-lane road is 2,000 vehicles during the peak hour each direction. Okay. Now back in 2017, last year when we counted, in the morning there was a, a peak, an AM peak, uh, peak at the flow of 416 cars. So that's about 20% of the available capacity of the road. In the afternoon, the peak hour was 217, which is roughly 10% of the available capacity. A residential development, once you once you count the cars and you look at the development, whether it be a shopping center or a residential development, what you do is you generate the traffic. You, you say, well, how much traffic is this development going to, going to uh, impose? And a residential subdivision um, during the peak hour will generate one trip, which is one movement of a car per lot during that peak hour. And not to get into the weeds, but 90%, in the morning, 90% of those are outbound trips and 10% are inbound, the PM is, is flipped. So what you can see with the 39, 40 lots, if you will, um, 36 in the morning, 36 cars will be added to Copeland Road. That does not mean that all 36 of those cars will be heading, turning left toward Lyons Middle School. They will be distributed left and right. It just depends on where, where they live. So, from a traffic standpoint, there, there really, there's currently not a, there may be a perceived problem, but there's not a engineering or capacity problem with traffic on Copeland Road related to Mounds Middle School. And this development will not negatively impact or make it worse. Okay? So, I just wanted to say that. The, uh, in the packet, or in the letter of intent, I just wanted to quickly go over the supporting reasons for an R10 development. The first one being the big one, this property is depicted as suburban area on the Lyons County Future Development Map. It's in the comprehensive plan for this to be a suburban area, which is supportive of a more dense uh, lot development. The second one, Mr. Paul, to answer your question, uh, yes, Lyons County has more than adequate water and sewer facilities down Lester Road and Copeland Road, and by rule and regulation, an R10 development like this will have to be connected. He will have to extend water and sewer lines, mains, into the development and connect to the county system. The third point was a traffic study, which we just addressed. Again, the analysis only showed 20.8% 20, 20 of the available capacity used during the AM and only 10.9% of the available capacity used during the PM peak hours. Uh, some other supporting uh, reasoning, um, approximately 100 feet south of this subject property, uh, there, there's property that's currently zoned R10, it's not developed as R10, but it is zoned R10. Uh, the next issue, about a third of a mile to the west of this development. Uh, there's a fully developed R10 development. Uh, today I counted the number of lots in there, and for my count is right, there's about 287 R10 lots, uh, approximately a third of a mile from this property to the west. The next point to the, to, to the east, uh, there's a large tract of land that fronts on Copeland perimeter and US 41 that is currently zoned R10. 
Um, back in 2007, I worked on a preliminary plat for a different developer, and at that time we had planned for 200 lots in there. So that, that property will support 200 lots. The next point, if you continue down Copeland Road to the east, approximately 4,000 feet, it's about three quarters of a mile, uh, there's another developed R10 uh, residential development that has, by my count, about 67 lots. The next point, R10 zoning is a compatible use to the OI zoning that's directly across the street. Um, Lounge Middle, the current building is currently you know, a thousand feet or so away from the southern property, but all of the acreage to the north, directly to the north, is on OI, I assume for future expansion, future school growth, etc. And R10 is a, is a very compatible uh, use. So um, that being said, I, I was made aware of, of the uh, petition uh, of the opposition. If I could just briefly address those issues. Um, the, the, the residents who signed the petition were concerned about traffic, which we've addressed. Um, safety. Um, two things there. With the addition of the sidewalk from this development, to Lounge Middle School, while I was out there counting cars, there were there were kids um, riding bikes on Copeland Road. There were there were some ladies that were out walking their afternoon, you know, exercise and socializing. With the addition of that sidewalk, um, we can get those those bicycles and the, and the pedestrians off of the roadway and onto that sidewalk. That will help increase the safety out there. The addition of the solid opaque fence and the landscape buffer around the, the western and, and southern property lines will give some privacy to Mr. Brandon's residence, residences. Uh, will also help address the safety thing. You know, his residence won't have direct access to uh, the, the surrounding properties. Uh, the decreased property values, that's, that's a common concern and it's always a concern but historically, that has never been shown that a new development actually decreases property values. It has done nothing historically other than make property values go up. And the, the last one, the general well-being. Um, I, I, I don't know the residences out there. I did meet with Mr. Guest, who lives directly uh, south. Um, not that he was in support of, of this development. Um, so I don't know what the current well-being of, of the community is. However, my experience over the many, many years I've been doing this, this uh, business, this work, um, is that any time a new development, new construction, uh, new landscaping, new roads, et cetera, there's actually, it kind of gives an area of Facebook. It kind of, it, it, it makes people feel better that things are happening out there. So. That being said, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have in regard to this topic. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Just, just one brief, but I noticed yes. that you uh, made a note, notation of the three conditions that was previous, and the fact that Jason added another one today. Uh, yeah, 100 foot, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Okay. The, the, you asked about whether, you know, what the impact to the number of blocks. Um, <coughs> Potentially right now, if we don't make any other changes, we're, we'll probably lose one lot. Mm -hmm. Because the, the four lots that are on the south are already more than 100 feet wide okay. along the property line. However, you see there's, there's a, there's a right-of-way that's stubbed to the south, and it like dead ends to the south. That's only there because the ULDC requires it. Mr. Brandon doesn't want it, and definitely Mr. Gass, when I, when I spoke with him, he doesn't want it. So we will be going forward with a, with a, a variance request to try to get rid of that, uh, even though it's, it's required. We're going to try to get rid of that, which will give us some additional frontage along the uh, western property. Any other questions? Mr. Kitt, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone here else wish to speak in favor? We've actually let our time get away from us. Anyone else here wish to speak in favor? There being none, I will take anybody wishing to speak against this request at this time? Anyone wishing to speak in, against this request? My name is Rick Guest. I live at 3001 Lester Road. <coughs> and to start with what Mr. Kent was talking about on the, <coughs> I know my property is on the R10. It was 
done that many years before I moved there. They didn't do that time. So I wouldn't build my house down right out. And needless to say, I built my house right in the middle of it. But that was true, but I've not got that on my mind at all. It's just, we all got a little bit of privacy out there. It's somewhat, I mean, we all got a little bit of privacy. This, this is going to take, this is going to take away a lot of our privacy. It's going to be too dense. Uh, with the two entrances that he talked about, that could on the Copa Road right there, during the peak time of the school that night, we hit two entrances there, and he got left the road right there beside one of his entrances. Hit on the and then you got the head start back here just across from his property with four entry ways from the area of it. So you got all that right there in one close center. During his peak out of this emergency vehicle started to come in there with these extra vehicles. Time. If anyone else here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward this time. Say your name and address for the record. I'm Roger Boyd at 2274 Fulton Road. And uh, I have the same concern as Mr. Mr. Gass there. Uh, the traffic, I think it was said that that would have 36 additional cars and 30 some homes. I know that I have two cars at my house. Uh, I'll take all of my neighbors out. Uh, as far as the well-being to, uh, to the community, Colton Road, most of the families there, I've lived there for 30 years on Colton Road, grew up within five blocks where I know uh, live now. We know each other, all of the families along the road there, uh, we know each other, we take care of each other, look after each other, and I think that's, that's what we mean. We don't, uh, we don't know who's coming in there, how many, or so forth. If we look at the map there, if we look right to the north, that Pecan Grove, that is owned by the Lyons County School Board. That is uh, for future expansion of the, of the middle school. Both of those entrances to that property are going to be directly into that, that new uh, development there, whenever it's decided to do that. I think all of this needs to be uh, uh, taken into consideration. As far as the traffic, uh, we were talking about peak hours. Uh, traffic on Copa Road has increased ever since they put uh, Perimeter Road there. It's now it's a, it's a shortcut from Madison Highway to Perimeter Road. And we get 24 hour traffic. We get it uh, semis in there all, all through the night call. And uh, it's not just doing the peak hours. There are peak hours. Peak hours today, traffic will stop. I live three blocks from Madison Highway. Traffic will stop in front of my house, stop to stand still on the while the traffic was left out of school. I have cameras in my house. I can watch that and review it. I think I'm going to count the cars. That's all I have. Okay. Just one thing. Any questions for the presenter? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We still have some time. Does anyone else here wish to speak against this request? Come forward. Mm -hmm. 
Please be served. Put your name and address for the record, please, sir. Good evening. My name is Don Magister. My address is 2468 Coconut. I live right to the west of this property. Uh, in the peak hours, I know we mentioned the general mentioned 36 cars. If you look at a 3 o'clock county, you do look more than that. I could not get out my driveway at the peak hours of the morning. And the peak hours, I can't be in. I have to wait, 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 wait. There's so many cars, the line is so long. The line is back all the way up past that's the road. Under the peaks. The line is down past almost Copa Heights. I do have a question uh, for Mr. Ken, if I can ask you a question, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, you, you said that this, is it the state that allows for 2,000 calls? No, that's not a, it's not a state requirement. When you look at the capacity of, of roadway, you look at the number of cars that a, that a segment of roadway can hold and maintain a level of service C. Again, not getting the and I, but, 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 but I believe you said he, uh, during peak hours it could handle 2,000 though? Yes. Okay. And, it's, and it's presently 416 at a peak hour? At that time in January on a normal school day, yes. It would be the a.m. peak hour was 400 and something. 217 and the two, what is the bottom bill? Yeah, that's right. For a period, again, for a period of about 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. Thank you, sir. Commissioner, yes, discussion? So basically we're looking at only a 20% capacity. The average of that, we're looking at a 15% capacity that we're at currently. And um, how many laws are we looking at in here? 38. 38 So an additional, if you double it, 76 cars. Still not looking at anywhere near that. I think, I think we're mix, missing a, a, a very big point here. You've got a big area where all the pine pecan trees are out there. The county has that already planned for future development for a school. If they develop that school and make it larger or keep what they got and add something else on, you're talking about a horrendous amount of traffic on there. Now, I don't know where y'all went out there and looked, but I rode out there the other day and sat there and watched the traffic. 
at, during the peak, peak time. It's backed up, and, and he's right. Whoever was speaking about children walking up and down the road and, and on bicycles, regardless of how much traffic you add to it right now, you're going to increase the danger to those, those kids that are out there on the road. And that could be my family or whatever out there. So that's number one. Number two is, is you also got to take into consideration the families that are existing out there right now that's lived there forever. And I think all I, you know, in, in, the, in the other uh, situations that's come up in the past, there was no opposition, nobody had any problem with it. Now we got a lot of opposition, and we're trying to justify something that could be detrimental to, to, uh, to students, or possibly further expansion of the school out there without paving and putting a four-lane road in there and, and it being a total mess. Because... 10 foot or whatever is not going to accommodate another four lane road in there. I don't know if the width of that, the, the right of way would accommodate it now. But I, I've got a real concern just being out there looking at it. If you hadn't looked at it, you need to go out there and look. And that was the reason I brought up the traffic study. And, and he answered the traffic study correctly. Um, so anything that we add to it is going to create more danger to the school. And um, are, are we taken away from the expansion of the school by making these decisions? I know it's a minuscule amount right now. Right. But I think when we dump that big amount from a new school or whatever may happen out there, I think we're going to overwhelm the road. Well, that's my point exactly. Is if we're looking at a new school coming in, they're the ones that are going to be creating the traffic. I mean, I don't see how a, a subdivision with 36 homes would really impact traffic when you're looking at a new school that could possibly impact the traffic to a much greater degree. Okay, how do you address the people that are against it though? I mean, this this guy that's been there forever. Well, and yeah. how, how are they going to address it when the school wants to, um, you know, increase the size of the capacity or the number of buildings and they want to access it from across the street here. You know, I mean, yeah. I think it's... The thing is, we're not stopping him developing. We're, you know, he's got uh, R1 right now. So it can be developed right now. I, I mean, I'm just throwing options out here right. because I've, I've, had a real, I've had a real concern with it. Anything in that particular area, whether it's this project or whatever, mm -hmm. when you increase the volume after sitting out there, and, and if you haven't looked, you need to go look and, and see out there. I'll set that pick up on. I know it's... So you know what I'm talking about there. It's a safety yeah. issue. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a big time safety issue for me. Yeah. Everything uh, We're all talking about this future school up there. I don't think the school system has mentioned anything about a school on that end of the county. Yeah. They own the property, don't they? Well, they do, but they own the property out of the road. They on the middle road also. So I think we're looking at something there. Mm -hmm. That, that, that may not need to be looked at. I mean, they've owned that property since they put the original Lounge High School in there. So uh, it was all the same land purchase that was across the road there. So, I, you know, and I, I know that Mr. Kent was correct in his in numbers and everything, but if you're sitting out there in that home and you're not going to pick up a child at Lounge Middle School, and you're sitting in traffic waiting for everyone else around you to go pick up a child. That's a long wait. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's two sides to the court. So, I mean, you know, uh, I think Mr. Brown and by offering to put the sidewalk in is, it was, is, a, is a noble gesture, and I appreciate that. It's going to help have safety for the kids. But uh, the, the thing of the traffic right now, is yeah for an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening. It's you can't get in and out. I appreciate that, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, I just don't know that I'm ready to put that many houses in that in that area. I'm glad to see that we've got water and sewer in there. But as far as us worried about the school over there, I think that should not. I don't think that should be in the uh, in the mix at all. Where's your one? Well, my. I thought about this school going out there where is if was a school were to be put out there, it would probably be a driver for development in here. Because you look around at where we place a lot of schools, 
like on River Road, for example. After that school was there, a lot of people wanted to live in those subdivisions around there. Those subdivisions have grown and grown over the years. And I think the same thing would happen in this place. And then when you talk about school safety, look at where Elvis High School is. You have 3,000 plus students out there, and all the teachers as well. And it's right in the middle of a very heavily commercial area. You have a mall there. You have all these restaurants there, businesses all up and down Norman Drive. You have uh, uh, just, I think, one of the worst traffic situations you could have, but we don't have a lot of accidents out there. Uh, there you know, there's really, from what I've heard and seen in the paper, very little problem with accidents and traffic. And that's, I can't think of a worse situation than we have out there. With you know, the people going in and out of that school and all the people coming in off the interstate, going to the restaurants, and all the Valdosta and the surrounding county people going to the shopping areas. I mean, the, the, the traffic's going to happen. Oh, I'm aware of that. I'm, just, but... saying, you know, I'm, just, I'm just, I think, you know, I'm the same way when it's my, my house and my, I've been there. When people wanted to develop next to me or build next to me or something like that. We don't like change. But the fact of the matter is, you know, over time, change is going to happen. And if the school goes out there, there's going to be more change than um, less change. And, and the change is going to be because the school is there. And more people are going to want to live near the school. If it's a nice school, they have kids. And then people, you know, are going to want to start putting up restaurants and everything. You're right, you know, Chick-fil-A. Murder team. Somebody's going to try to be out there to take advantage of of all that. I understand that. And we planned a lot to the north also of 41 because we was expecting 41 to expand and be four lane. It didn't get expanded. So all I'm saying is with me now, I'm very cautious about doing something that we don't have a true plan in place for foreign expansion. But that's just my opinion. I'm just, that's just me. Um, the way we're there, I mean, there are, there are a lot of things that we can look at where emotions and desires come into play. But, you know, really, at the end of the day, we're supposed to look at this and our, our future use map and comprehensive plan and determine, is this request an appropriate request for the land? Is, is the land use request appropriate? You know, that's, that's really what we're supposed to be looking at. And is it detrimental to the other landowners is one of them? Things that's on there also. Then that's always a matter of opinion. Yeah. I mean, if you or I owned the property and it was in our interest, then we'd be in favor of it. If we were not owners of the property and impacted by it negatively, feel like we're going to have somebody right next door looking over our property line into our houses, we'd be against it. That's, those are all normal reactions. Oh, I know. I've seen it for about 15 years. <laughs> All right, Mr. We appreciate the discussion. Do we need any more discussion, or are we in a and ask for a motion? I'll ask for a motion this time. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mason Wills. Um, with all of the issues that I've stated, it may fail for a second. But I'm going to make a motion that we deny this request. Recommend denial to the commission. Okay, so we have a motion for denial. Do I have a second on the motion? I have no motion. So you have no second? No second. No second. No second. Uh, so can we get another motion? Try not. I'll make a motion that we accept this request, REZ 2018-07, um, as presented with um, the four um, conditions presented by staff. And so I have a motion. I'll say. I have a second. Commissioner Wiles, any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor of the motion, please say by raising your right hand. All opposed? That is 6 one four. Thank you very much. That was a very lengthy case. I appreciate everybody's patience in that. Jason, you've done an outstanding job this evening. Yes, sir. Matt, we will move on to city case. Uh,